My name is Christine. Joe is my oldest child. He was diagnosed with Huntington's disease October of 2018. Dee, my youngest child, was diagnosed in February of 2019. Huntington's disease is like ALS, Parkinson's, and Alzheimer's, all grouped together at the same time. It is a hereditary neurodegenerative disease. And it runs really deep in our family. Their father's side, we knew of it, was the, my children's grandfather. It was uh, first described in actually 1872 among residents in Long Island, and but the gene was discovered in 1993. So now Huntington's disease can be diagnosed by a blood test. And each child with an affected parent has a 50-50 chance of getting this mutant gene. HD is a movement disorder causes psychiatric disturbances and personality changes. There's no cure. Symptoms are treated, but behavioral changes can happen years and years before any physical symptoms have started. And every diagnosis is very different from person to person. Uh, and the way that it develops um, throughout the time of their lifespan. It is a fatal uh, disease. It definitely shortens the lifespan. Joe um, has what we call a cage number of 50. D has a cage number of 43. The Huntington's disease is actually found in everybody, yeah. but it's supposed to only be repeated very minimal amount of time. It's a mutated gene. gene. Correct. So, but in Huntington's disease, the, the gene mutates too many times. It's, so it's repeated, and that's why, that's what the cage number is about. It's, that's how many times this gene is repeated. And the higher the number, the kind of worse the symptoms may be or faster faster progression yeah. earlier in life because there is also juvenile Huntington's disease which can affect children. Having children myself uh, I, it is a concern at, at a, all the time throughout my whole family. Having multiple family members with the, the disease. I mean our own father. Joe we were going to ask you some questions about how Huntington's has affected your life. And Joe has progression much more than D does. But I'm there's, also five years under, I didn't tell. Five years <laughs> between them. And Joe, it's been it's four years since your diagnosis. What has changed in your life? Pretty much everything. It just changes everything that you do. I was a tattoo artist for multiple years and a uh, musician for multiple years. It becomes diff became difficult and I ended up having to uh, step away from my work really early in life. So you had, what was your career choice? Doctor. So you had been going to college. Over at Western. And you told me that you were having trouble learning. Unfortunately, you had to quit college and work. Not able to drive anymore. Neither is D. And I'm 33 years old, so it, you know, it, it, that's when 38. he, yeah, that's when he started his symptoms and, and stuff as, as well. And I can definitely tell the difference. Joe tells me he does not, he is not aware of his movements. And the movements are just uh, called chorea. There's involved the hairy twitching with shoulders, face, mouth, yes. as well, tongue. First time, you know, as a caretaker that I noticed definitely something was wrong 
was gelled. Um, he was very fidgety, and that's when I started looking into the diagnosis a little more. A year or two after that, that he decided to get tested. We're a family here to fight Huntington's disease. And together. Yes. It's my t shirt says there's no manual, but there is a mother who will never give up. We just want everybody to know about Huntington's. To be aware. And this is not something that happens someplace else. This is right here in our little tiny community of maybe 400 people. Yeah. This is in, this is not something that happens far, far away. And it's, it's right here, right yeah. here, your neighbor. Yeah, that, and, it, and it's such a rare disease that, you know, seeing someone with it or hearing about it, I've talked to doctors and psychologists that had no clue what, it, or have never even met someone with a with, disease yes, or yes. even know what it is. So trying to find help uh, was kind of difficult at first. Uh, then we found specialists. Uh, but we still have to drive an hour and a half to get to the neurologist. Again, we live in a very rural area. We have a lot of family support, which is great. But with living in a rural area, resources are so hard to get to. It's a four hour drive for us to go to Chicago or to St. Louis, where they have many more resources. It's hard to get into clinical trials because of being in a rural area. The cost is just phenomenal. And must I say that her being a nurse and, and being an awesome mom has helped us um, live the best life we can. Uh, that's what it's about, um, is the quality of life for uh, people with Huntington's. No matter across the world, whoever watches this even, you know, being, communicating, saying I had such a hard time, I think, when I first got diagnosed about talking about because no one knew or whenever I talked about it, no one knew what to say back to me. It's like telling someone you have cancer, there's no cure. You say there's no like cure for cancer, but it just devastating. <laughs> and many people with Huntington's disease um, are mistaken as being drunk or high. Um, so don't always assume that you know, the person really is drunk or high. Um, I've, I've, had, I've had people have seen that of me all plenty before. I've been sober almost two years, coming up on two years now, and it's, you know, it's just crazy to, to hear. A neighbor of Joe's <laughs> who has called him names. Um, but he's just not aware of Huntington's disease. Or us even going on our vacation, you yeah. know, uh, I, I can tell there's a lot of people that just didn't understand uh, the necessity is of, you know, what we needed, you know, ordering wheelchairs and stuff like that while our bodies are aging. They look, so. they look normal, but there's definitely an inside process going on that you can't see so many times you can't see it or know think, what's really going on I, I, and she doesn't have it I'll, I'll speak for you a little bit here on that is that I get questioned all the time about why I'm not working or why you know can't work. You're, thir you're, you're 33 years old you're fine like you know you can do all of that and it's not that I can't do certain things, but, you know, if, if I do too much, my body's done. It's, get uh, fatigued get very fatigued easily. Get fatigued very easily. Very easily. Very easily. Even in your sleep, there's thrashing around. And a lot of thrashing. And 
anyone else out there with Huntington's or any other families that are doing having to do with this and fight this, get as much help as you possibly can. You're looking like Gary Yeah. <laughs> See? Okay. Exactly. It's fatigued really quick. Go Team HG.